One minute. Good evening and welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Hartford Common Council. All proper notices were sent. I'd like to call this meeting to order and ask you to please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Roll call, Lori. The mayor and all older persons are present. Older person Webb and older person Sakura are attending via Zoom. All righty, we have before us a unanimous consent agenda. President Hege. We'll approve. And uh, the guy down there, uh, the uh, older person Turchi. Yeah. Guy with the new haircut. Yeah. And that's right. That's me. <laughs> very good. Motion by Elder Person Hagee, seconded by Elder Person Turchi, approving the following two items on the unanimous consent agenda. The Common Council minutes of June 28th and July 12th of 2022. And number two, authorizing appropriate city officials to transfer the hangar land lease for hangar number two at the Hartford Municipal Airport from David Wolbrink to Ben Gulch of Rubicon by assignment of lease. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Motion carried. Yeah, I, I, I do try and leave just a little bit of a space to let you guys jump in. So, uh, let's... You only have one guy up there. Yes, we, two. we, 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 we have, have two. Kyle, Kyle and then uh, uh, older person Webb as well. Oh. We, we just didn't see him. That's oh, all. okay. Okay. Uh, communications, Lori. Um, just a reminder, August 9th is the fall primary election. The polls are open from 7 o'clock a.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Early voting started yesterday, and that's weekdays, 745 to 415 in the clerk's office. That goes from July 26th to August 5th. And then just a reminder that the council meeting that was scheduled for August 9th had been moved to August 16th. Thank that's you very much for that reminder. Mm -hmm. Okay, next is uh, appearances, citizens' comments. Anybody wishing to make any appearances before the city council, uh, uh, please come up to the podium, state your name and address. You have three glorious minutes. Going twice, three times. Okay, next uh, item is mayor's report. And I have the distinct honor of recognizing uh, Mike Herman, Parks and Recreation Director, and uh, with a city proclamation. Whereas Parks and Recreation Director Mike Herman will be finishing his employment in Parks and Recreation after 38 and a half years of outstanding service, and whereas Mike Herman is a certified Park and Recreation Professional, a Wisconsin Parks and Recreation Association Foundation Board Member, and the 2008 George Wilson Service Award recipient, an award presented to a member who has distinguished themselves through continuous accomplishment and service to the state association. And whereas Mike Herman was instrumental in the building of the new recreation center, Veterans Aquatic Center, many updates to our parks and the planning of Centennial Park, whereas Mike Herman was in charge of recreation, parks, taxi, cemeteries, and building facilities, as well as indoor and outdoor pools. Whereas Mike Herman was in charge of 13 full-time staff, 22 parks, 231 acres of parks, 227 acres of undeveloped parkland, and eight shelters. Whereas the city of Hartford recognizes Mike Herman of this achievement as a true Hartford public servant, now therefore, be it known to all that I, Timothy C. Mahalik, Mayor of the City of Hartford, on behalf of the entire Hartford City Council, do hereby proclaim July 29th, that's this Friday, to be Parks and Recreation Director Mike Herman Day in the City of Hartford and unanimously approved by the Hartford City Council this 26th day of July 2022, signed the Honorable Timothy C. Timothy C. Mahalik, Mayor, of the city of Hartford. And I understand that the former President Trump will be coming here just to thank you on my permit. <laughs> so congratulations for that. Okay, <laughs> here you go. We're gonna give you your name tonight. And say oh, I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get, getting worn out. <laughs> in cemeteries, nobody's allowed to die for the rest of this year. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.
So you're going to have to listen to me one more time, just a little bit. <laughs> Three minutes, um, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I just want to thank the council and the Park and Rec Commission, Todd's here, um, for the support that was given to me um, working together. I think this says a lot of what was done, so thank you. Um, I think uh, my personal thought is uh, I hope I've left the community better after 38 years. Um, I want to thank my family. A couple are here. Um, position is demanding at times. It takes a lot of hours to do the job. So um, can't thank my loving, understanding, and supportive wife, Beth, enough. I hired her as a volleyball official. <laughs> she quit on me. <laughs> the first and then I married her. <laughs> uh, thanks, Beth, for marrying me. <laughs> After all that, I put you through uh, with that volleyball episode. Um, my Four children, now young adults, um, Hans, Paul, Mark, and Anna. I was supported by them. Um, more in more recent years, uh, more of an adult support, young adult support, like, Dad, it's time to retire. <laughs> enjoy your hobbies and enjoy it. You earned it. But they also um, had to hang around a lot when they were growing up. Beth had to bring them to many of the grand openings in our parks and playgrounds. Um, I don't think they minded that. They were the first ones to break in many of the playgrounds and equipment <laughs> and uh, the new rec center, um, aquatic center, and the fun things that um, we all have in Hartford to enjoy. Um, to the administrative team, Steve, um, Gary Koppelberger before, Matt Fulton before that. Um, I go back a ways. Some of you <laughs> don't know those names, but uh, Matt Fulton was my first administrator that I worked for. Um, and all the department heads that I've worked with over the years and currently, um, it's been a good working team. My staff, uh, hardworking, dedicated, uh, fun, creative. Sarah, Brian, and Lisa, retired Lisa, now back Lisa, uh, in taxi. <laughs> Uh, to help us through have been with me the longest and a special thanks to them. There's so many others, uh, some who went on to become many other directors <laughs> in other communities and um, just uh, nice to see how uh, people have passed through as supervisors to go on to uh, bigger uh, positions as well. And to the others that are currently with me um, in the office to uh, Melanie and Lauren and Tyler and Deb, um, the parks staff and building staff team, the maintenance crews, thank you. Um, and then finally to the community groups, um, this job, you work with a lot of different groups. So thanks for the partnerships and the, the work that you've done for parks and recreation. So thanks again, I've got a few days left. Um, going to try to enjoy them, and uh, um, I've got a lot of things I'm looking forward to in retirement, so thank you again. We'll want Mike and his family to stick around because afterwards the council is gracing them with uh, some celebratory cake afterwards, so. <laughs> Thank you. So that's how we get people to stick around for the full year. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a hint to go fast. That's what <laughs> Next order I have is the mayoral appointment of Dan Hummel to the Parks and Recreation Commission. So this is something that we would like to, uh, uh, we would need a motion to approve. We have a uh, motion to approve. Alderperson uh, Joe Kohler, Alderperson Carol. Motion by other person. Kohler seconded by other person. Carol appointing Dan Hummel to the Parks and Recreation Commission. 
I know Dan's going to do a wonderful job, but I do want it on record, Mike, that I did want you on because I just didn't want you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> they said there's no way he's going to jump on that right away. So I thought that was funny. Okay. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns as regarding the appointment of Dan Hummel to the Parks and Rec Commission? He does have my full support. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. no. Aye. Thank you. Motion carried. Okay, aldermanic requests. President Heggie. Last week, Wednesday, the Hartford Area Chamber of Commerce had the monthly meeting, and uh, Lily Keitel was introduced. She is the new executive director taking over the chamber. So probably most of you know her, had been at Perk Place for a lot of years. So that's our new director. She's high energy. I'm sure she'll do well. That's all I have. Thank you. Alder Person Resniak. Yeah, why not? Uh, tonight, next Tuesday night, our Hartford Police Department, along with the Fire Department, is having National Night Out. This is statewide, I believe. Uh, nationwide. Na nationwide. Okay, I missed a few. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's from 5 until 8 o'clock down at Burn Park, right across the street. And uh, they're going to have uh, Flash, our dog, down there. The SWAT vehicle is going to be there, squad cars, police cadets, free ice cream from the Lions Club, one per person. Pay attention now, okay? <laughs> and free broader hot dog, one per person. And basically lots of activities down there at National Night Out, five to eight at Burnt Park next Tuesday night. Thank you very much, Alder Person Carroll. I just would like to uh, say thank you, Mike, and good luck. I hope the next one can stay as long as you did. <laughs> Alder Person Garza. Yeah, I'd just like to congratulate Mike for his 38 years, so. And uh, Hartford, I'm sure, appreciates what you've done. Thank you. Alderperson Turchi. Yeah, congratulations, Mike. Well done. Alderperson Sakura. I just want to thank everyone for coming out to uh, Maxwell Street Days. It, it was busy and fun, and it was a great day for it. And uh, just want to say another congratulations. Okay, thank you. Alderperson Kohler. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to echo everybody else. I'm going to say, um, you know, Mike, it's been great. I've been um, part of this community and part of the uh, rec center for many years in different different levels. Um, it's not going to be the same, uh, but you left one heck of a legacy and you left one heck of a, um, a high bar to um, for uh, Randy to cross. So um, we're hoping the best. And Beth and family, I appreciate all the time and support you've given, um, given to the city. And of course, pushing Mike out there, but you're giving it back to the city. So thank you for you and your family. Alderperson person web. I just wanted to say congratulations to Mike as well. Thanks. Thank you. Alderperson person Fulop. So congrats, Mike. I don't know if you remember, but you know, we, yeah, you do remember. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we met back in 1985, I think, when Mike was the assistant to the uh, individual that was running the place at the time. And I, I think I ran a judo club there for a couple of years with Mike's assistance. So um, my foray into maybe uh, some young adulthood there. So thank you very much, Mike, for that. And I appreciate everything you've done for me back then as well as now. So I think a uh, great contribution to the city. Thank you. OK, with that, we go to the next item, standing committee reports, finance and personnel. Uh, Chairman Rusniak. One item tonight, discussion consideration of the addition of one new full-time Parks Cemetery Equipment Operator position as part of the 2023 city budget. Mike should really take this, but <laughs> but he's not going to. Or is he going to? <laughs> no, Three more not? days. Why not? <laughs> the, uh, at the last uh, person, uh, Finance and Personnel Committee meeting, um, and along with that, the following council meeting, um, we discussed this issue, uh, unfortunately, ba based on the fact that we did not have a quorum that night. Uh, the, uh, the action that was taken that night uh, was not legal at the time. So again, it's being brought back. Um, you heard all the discussions regarding that. Um, and so I will, I will leave it sit there. I don't want to get cut off. Absolutely. So this was a unanimous vote last time. We'll look for a motion and a second. We have a motion by Alderperson Fulop, second by Alderperson Rusniak. Motion by Alderperson Fulop, seconded by Alderperson Rusniak, approving the addition of one new full-time park cemetery equipment operator position 
as part of the 2023 city budget. Thank you very much. Mike, you have, what, about 25 pages to read? The, uh... <laughs> uh, Steve made me make it an A-plus uh, executive summary report. So did it, it, was, make, it, did it make the grade, Steve, or not? Yeah. It was a B-minus coming out of the chute, so I, had him take, I sent it back and said, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Okay, did uh, I hear uh, older person Sakura? I think that's who that was. No, I thought that oh, was older person that Webb. Was Webb. <clears throat> well, we'll take that as an aye for a unanimous vote. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Motion approved. Okay, we are up to uh, resolution 3633, a resolution approving the 2023 budget policy. This was also a uh, unanimous vote after some discussion. Uh, that we're redoing. Uh, President Hagee. Move to approve. Yeah, Move to approve. Second by Alderperson Fulop. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have the city administrator's report. It was uh, put up in the in the paper that uh, this wasn't talked about because I believe the author of this was not here. That is. Uh, not true. The reason we didn't is was that uh, the, the individual presented a paper that we were all able to read. It was not an agenda item, so we couldn't do it. Uh, the fact that we didn't have a quorum, of course, means we would have had to do this again anyway. So, not wanting to count our chickens before they hatch. Oh, oh, oh boy. No. Oh, oh. I, that was I, bad. I had to work with that one. That was it. Uh, we will turn that over to yeah. our yeah. city administrator, uh, Steve Volker. So uh, proper protocol for when a resident requests a uh, change to the ordinances is the fact that they normally bring it forward to the council, presented to the council. Again, the author of said was not uh, in attendance that night. But anyways, um, the mayor had brought to our attention he would like to see it on a future agenda. And so the next step is for the council then to approve, to review a draft of an ordinance uh, allowing chickens in the city of Hartford. And so if the council agrees tonight, these ordinances, uh, I've been a part of chicken ordinances, p uh, pig ordinances, um, falcon ordinances, pigeon ordinances. And so we just want to make sure the council is leaning for staff to spend this kind of time and energy into uh, at least drafting an ordinance. And if you're wondering if it's going to be somewhat like West Bend's, which is Den what Dennis brought up last year, uh, last meeting. I'm guessing it's going to be since since our attorney drafted that one also. So <laughs> anyways, uh, but if, if that's the direction that the council would like to go, that's what we're looking for tonight. And then again, he will present it at the next upcoming meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I did want to speak here uh, real briefly on this is I'm very much in favor of uh, allowing that uh, just one of those little extra things of freedom. The biggest city in our county, West Bend does have an ordinance allowing chickens. And I really do believe, uh, from a mankind st standpoint, that a chicken is, is almost a perfect animal. You can do something with just about every part of it. Uh, even, it even when it defecates, we use it to create more food because we put it on our fields. It's incredible. Even the shells you take and you crush up, you put them in a coffee can and you put them on your garden to give it a little extra calcium. Everything about a chicken pretty much is useful, which I think is pretty, except for some of the noise that they make, which is why we wouldn't allow roosters, because that is uh, not the part, uh, not the animal that does lay those wonderful eggs. So uh, again, this is something that I would definitely support and would encourage all of you to support as well. And my hats off to the author of the paper that came through, because uh, that was probably the most thorough uh, a job of, of going through and uh, delineating exactly why we should have something like this. It did a great job. So uh, with that, uh, uh, all the person Turchi. Question for Steve. Inquiries about, I want a chicken in my backyard. How many have we had in the last 24 months? Do you know? Serious inquiries? Not yeah, like I mean, Facebook. Like yeah, Facebook I mean, like comments. somebody coming in to, into City Hall oh, and I don't know that. I, I have not gotten any. Okay, thank you. Okay, older person, Resnick. I'm not so sure about this. Um, I read through the pages and pages that that gentleman uh, presented to us, 
But I can't see changing an ordinance for one person or two persons. If the council chambers was packed tonight with 100 people wanting chickens in their backyard, I think I'd be convinced. But we're basing this on one guy, maybe two, I think. The fellow that drafted the papers to us wasn't the same guy that got up and spoke a couple weeks ago, right? Correct. So now we got two people that are interested in chickens in the backyard. I'm just not convinced. I live in a nice subdivision. I don't want to see chickens in anybody's backyard in my subdivision. I don't know how the rest. Borland Farms is a wonderful subdivision. You want to see chickens out there, Jeff? Called I'm not putting you on the spot. No, you know I, that's, that's, that's it's called farms. Yeah, it's well, called farms. farms. Well, farms belong to the country. <laughs> I mean, I, it was addressed to me. That's why I asked the question, hmm. is that how many people are serious about chickens? Two. I like chickens. <laughs> Tim's right. Great use, but I'm not too sure I want a bunch of chickens in my subdivision. Right. And we saw pretty pictures of chicken coops that you can build. Oh, yeah. But what about the chicken coops that Joe Blow is going to build with scrap materials he's got laying around his backyard or something? Could look pretty shabby. One other thing I read in there, <clears throat> we're not going to allow any butchering of chickens in the city of Hartford if this would pass. Mm -hmm. The slaughtering places in this area around here, I'm talking uh, Gehrings Meat Market, Cedar Road Meats, uh, I'm leaving a couple out. They don't butcher chickens. They butcher beef, they butcher steers, they don't butcher chickens. So if you can't go to a facility and get your chickens butchered, you're going to do it in your backyard. Or are you going to do it in your garage? Or worse yet, in your basement? And I just think we're creating a real bad scenario here. So I'm not in favor of it. OK, just to, uh, to comment on, on uh, all the person Resnick's comments, right now you could take scrap material and build a really crummy looking doghouse for a dog. <laughs> yep. Okay, and we've yeah. seen some exactly, and, yep. and we don't run up and, and do it. So I, I think that's kind of a, 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 a non-issue as regards to butchering chickens. A lot of people will have uh, eggs, but I know a number of people that aren't here because they don't happen to live in the city of Hartford that keep chickens as pets and then have the eggs. They would never consider butchering a chicken. Hmm. If you only have two people here that are really interested in it, maybe you're only gonna have just literally a handful of people that would even do it. I don't think you're going to see a stampede if every neighborhood is going to have a chicken coop. That's not, I don't believe it's not going to happen. <laughs> and the interesting right. thing mm -hmm. is it's discussion and consideration of requesting the city attorney to draft an ordinance allowing chickens in it. We would have to vote on what he drafts. All we're doing is giving him permission to draft it. Right. And I'd be very interested in seeing it, and maybe it needs to hit, I mean, if, if we're going to take our fingers and wet them every time and stick them up in the air and see what happens on Facebook, that would give those people uh, a chance to uh, do something along that line, and, uh, and we could see what would happen. Alder Person Fulham. How much work is this to you? The drafting of the ordinance would be uh, very minimal because, again, he, we're gonna steal West Bend's. Thank you. I mean, again, he, he, dra he helped to draft it with, uh, you know, the several people involved. But uh, there's plenty of communities um, in which they, they already have them. So it's a question of what you like, what you don't like about it. I had I had created <coughs> one up in um, a prior community up in Winnick County, completely different philosophy there. Um, and um, it was really um, uh, an ordinance in which the neighbors got to choose more so. You had to get signed off by all the neighbors surrounding your property to allow you to get it. You got the approval, you got the signature of all the neighbors, so it was fine. So it really was kind of a situation here where we're talking, you know, where um, making decisions for everybody, well, your neighbors would have to make the decision for you. And um, again, different, different philosophy, but hours wise, I mean, less than an hour to, to, right, to, to pull off, change the name from West Bend to Hartford. Before I take anybody else on, on this side, I just wanted to give uh, Alder Person Webb, Alder Person Sakura, because we don't have a picture of you there, and I can't see that there's a hand. Oh, there it is. Yes, uh, so, uh, Alder Person Webb, Alder Person Sakura, do either of you have comments, questions as to uh, just requesting the city attorney to draft an ordinance? And then, of course, the ordinance will be voted separately, but to create the ordinance, as Steve said, this is more of a, a word find and replace for what we'd be looking at. So, well, under an hour's worth of work. Uh, uh, for the city attorney. Any comments, questions uh, from either of you? Yeah. Yeah, I, <clears throat> this is Justin. I, 
Okay, go ahead, Kyle. Justin. All the person left, go ahead. I, I support drafting. Yeah, I support drafting an, an ordinance. Um, I think I'd like it to be modeled more like the one that Steve just talked about, where the neighbors have to sign off, but I'd at least like to see a couple options. So I'd be in support of drafting it. Thank you. All the person Sakura? I'd be in support of drafting it also. I also know of some uh, rogue chickens that are already in the city, so. Um, <laughs> oh, that's probably true. He just walks out maybe, the uh, Maybe there's more than just two people. <laughs> okay. Uh, older person, Kohler. Yeah, about a year and a half ago, I had, a, I had a, another person come and they approached me as an alderman saying they'd like to see the chicken ordinance, you know, why don't we have one, so on and so forth. And, um, you know, and the reasons, some of the reasons that they had it was they were in a community that they moved from that had them. Uh, their children were able to raise chickens, part of the 4F, 4-H program, um, as well as, you know, getting your own eggs. I mean, how many people, I know quite a few people, they like, see the, the eggs on the side of the road, they're selling them for, you know, at the farmer, opposed to going through the store, um, you know. But that's really, I think a lot of it comes down to, um, it, it could also be very educational for, for some people. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I would say let's get the draft going, see what comes up with, and go forward. Okay. Old person, Turchi, did you have your hand up before? No, it just seemed like uh, we were talking about two, and based on your comments, it should have been three. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> President Hagee. I'm relatively neutral on this. Um, I probably can go either way. There was one concern that was raised to me that uh, uh, the people that – sent the letter to us, obviously they're advocating for it, so they're going to gloss over everything. And the one item that was brought to my attention is uh, chickens were eliminated from cities, I don't know about Hartford in particular, years ago, with problems with vermin because of the feces. So if we can address that, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, and what actually has to be in an ordinance to control that, I'm not sure. but. Uh, Something to think about, at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and again, you have the same thing uh, uh, to a much greater degree, I think, rather than one or two chickens, as if you have a couple of dogs. Uh, so uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, feces, depending on the size. So feces, yes. Again, but I'm talking about vermin because of it. Okay. Uh, Alder Person Fulop. Just want to comment. I'm impressed with your chicken consumption knowledge as we introduce this topic. <laughs> so I just <laughs> did. There is a story it. behind that. I will share yeah. with you afterwards. Uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, one other thing I think uh, going along with uh, the eggs being brought up uh, just uh, 18 months ago, remember when eggs were on sale, they dropped down to 97 cents. Okay, if you go to Quick Trip right now, they're 2.99. Mm -hmm. So there is that uh, economic thing for those of us who eat eggs, the tripling in price, so much for not being in a recession. Uh, a tripling in price over a very short period of time of, of a, what would be considered a key product that you'd be able to produce on your own, I think, is uh, one of the other items that would be uh, considered. Okay, with that, uh, would look to a motion to approve the, uh, the uh, requesting the city attorney to draft an ordinance allowing chickens in the city of Hartford. Again, this vote is not to approve it. It is to just create the draft that we would then vote on. Alderperson Garza, second by Alderperson Kohler. Motion by Alderperson Garza, second by Alderperson Kohler to request the city attorney to draft an ordinance allowing chickens in the city of Hartford. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no? No. Okay, we have two no's. Uh, Alderperson Turchi, Alderperson Rosniak. And uh, so the motion passes for adjournment. Alder Person Fulop, second by Alder Person Carroll. Motion by Alder Person Fulop, seconded by Alder Person Carroll for adjournment at 728. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> Short and sweet. I told my wife. That was about 10 minutes longer than I expected. Well, about <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes longer than uh -huh. I expected. <laughs>